This week, we take a closer look at a teacher making a difference in the lives of others. We also learn how students at THS can make an impact on others this holiday season. edition of WTHS News. I'm Kaylee Martin and I'm Thomas Roper. It's Christmas time and holiday shopping is underway here at THS. Due to recent inflation, 56% of shoppers this season won't be able to buy as many gifts as previous years. Even so, over 77% of shoppers still plan to buy with a lower budget. This is true for students at THS who still want to give their friends presents on a lower budget. Not only do students shop for their friends, they also have the opportunity to shop for kids on the Angel Tree in the Media Center. The Salvation Army Angel Tree started in 1979 and the tradition still continues today. Children's wishes and needs are put on a card and placed on the Angel Tree. People then adopt an angel and buy Christmas gifts for their children. The Angel Tree here at THS is supporting students who go to high school here or surrounding schools. Adopting an angel and experiencing the joy of giving this Christmas is a wonderful opportunity. The Angel Tree is a great opportunity to impact kids, especially ones that go to school here or surrounding schools. It's a great opportunity to just give them a wonderful Christmas and impact them and make a difference in their lives. The gifts will be distributed on December 19th after all the angels have been adopted. Students also have an opportunity to help the Salvation Army by ringing the bell in the mornings or during lunch. Students aren't the only one making a difference here at school. Morgan gives us more information about a teacher who's making a big impact. Here at Tupelo High School, there are many teachers who are making a difference beyond the classroom. One of our history teachers, Mr. James Abernathy, not only teaches, but he also helps others find their biological parents. Mr. Doug Stewart is one of Mr. Abernathy's good friends that he has helped throughout the years find his biological family. Um, I was adopted myself, and so I had a very difficult time finding my birth mother, and, and a search angel helped me, and I wanted to return that favor uh, that I got uh, several years back and by helping others. The holidays are a time for families to come together. One specific family is using this time to reconnect after many years. Well, a lifelong questions has, he's helped answer them. He's uh, provided uh, a future reference for my, my children as to their health and what to, what to expect. It was a roller coaster process in helping Mr. Stewart, but that didn't stop him from achieving that special goal. Well, you learn that every story is different. Every story is different. Uh, sometimes the people are not necessarily overly curious about finding out who their biological relatives are. Maybe they got a DNA test at Christmas or holiday or whatever, and, and it's not that big a deal. But for others, it's a really big deal. Mr. Stewart had a lot of hardships going through foster care systems, being adopted, and also going through a difficult medical history. You know, because I've had some health problems, had I ever looked for my birth parents, and uh, I said I, I tried multiple times and failed. And he said, well, let me take a run of it. And uh, his con contacts, uh, he was able to break break down walls that I, I never knew existed. Although it took many tries and long waits, with the help of Mr. Abernathy, Mr. Stewart's process of finding his birth family became successful. It was just so rewarding after having such a difficult time identifying his birth mother to finally figure out where she is and to connect them. And when I figured it out, uh, I don't rarely cry, but I actually cried because uh, Doug Stewart's one of my best friends and, and it was just very, very, very rewarding to help him find his birth mother. Mr. Abernathy has made a great impact on Mr. Stewart's life as well as many others. I'm Morgan Brown, WTHS News. Thanks, Morgan. As the winter season approaches, our Golden Wave Athletics have been preparing for the spring semester. Riley has more updates in this week's sports. Hey everyone, I'm Riley Robinson and welcome back to this week's sports.
Last Thursday, our soccer team competed against North Pontotoc, and on Friday, the guys competed against Hartfield. During the North Pontotoc game, the girls played an impressive game and won with a final score of 11-0. The guys also won both games with a score of 6-0 against North Pontotoc and 1-0 against Hartfield. They also played against Starkville on Tuesday. At North Pontotoc and Hartfield were our two best games, I'd say. I think Hartfield, we tried a new formation and it worked pretty well. Soccer aren't the only ones competing against Starkville this week. Our bowling team also competed against them on Wednesday. The boys tied with Starkville with a score of 4-4 four to four, and the girls unfortunately lost 3-5. I'm um, just trying to do the best we can, learn from our mistakes and try to make it to state. Tonight, the basketball team will travel and compete in Pontotoc. Last week, they played against West Point. Both teams won with the guys winning with a score of 69-58 to and the girls 68-42. to um, I expect for us to do really well coming off of what we had last year, even though we have different players in different roles. When we lost five seniors last year, I still think we should be able to get back to where we were and hopefully this year win the whole thing. Tomorrow, boys soccer will play Lafayette and wrestling will be at Oxford. Our cheer team will also travel to Jackson for their state competition. Good luck to all of our teams competing this weekend. We'll have more updates on how they do next week. I'm Riley Robinson, WTHS Sports Media. Thanks, Riley. Ballet is another athletic activity that many students are a part of. Rebecca sets the stage as the tuba ballet performed its 41st annual production of The Nutcracker last weekend. The story of The Nutcracker starts at a family's Christmas party where two siblings, Clara and Fritz, celebrate with friends. After receiving a magical nutcracker from her uncle and witnessing a battle between toy soldiers and mice, Clara travels through snow to the land of sweets. There, several sweets dance for her and she's sent back to the real world. Here at the PAC, first through twelfth grade dancers perform The Nutcracker for thrilled audiences. So much hard work and dedication goes into this ballet. Afton Gable reflects on the guidance of the director and artistic directors. With Paul and Megan now, along with Miss Sharon, I just feel like so much has changed and it's going to be so good. The show is ever-changing but will always hold a special place in dancers' hearts. Lacey Little shares what she's most excited for during her final Nutcracker. I'm just really looking forward to making some of the best last memories of Nutcracker. Nutcracker is my favorite time of the year and I'm really sad to let it go, but I'm just really excited to do this one last time with my best friends. Lacey dances the role of Snow Queen this year and is in the waltz core. She shares about her roles this year and what this show means to her. Snow Queen, this is the first time I've danced that, but it is the hardest but most fun dance I've ever done. And it's just a very freeing experience. Just being on stage, I don't have to think about anything but all the things that God has blessed me with and all the things that make me happy and so it's just it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. These dancers say they will always remember the experiences they make during the Nutcracker. Afton tells us what she will miss most about this ballet. It's weird that this is our last one because we've been doing it for so long and I'm gonna miss probably the practices the most because we do it every single Sunday and it's a lot of laughs and a lot of fun and the performances it's like no other like we just have this bond and we've learned so much together and I'm gonna miss being on stage but I'm so excited at the same time it's bittersweet. The Nutcracker is such an important tradition here in Tupelo and what better way to start the holiday season. I'm Rebecca Johnston with WTHS News. Thanks, Rebecca. Another event to boost the Christmas spirit is the Reed's Downtown Christmas Parade happening tonight at 6 p.m. That's all we have for this week. Be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching this week's edition of WTHS News and have a great weekend. Also, here's a quick recap of the Orchestra Christmas concert held last night.